So I want to take a minute today to tell you about some features of our woodenware and why it serves us so well and why I think it will serve every backyard beekeeper in a, a way that they will really appreciate. For starters, we seal all of our equipment with a natural sealant that we make ourselves. Uh, and the process of making that sealant involves taking raw linseed oil and boiling it in order to polymerize the linseed oil. And then we add an equal volume of beeswax and pine rosin as a hardener. And then once, once that mixture has been heated and uh, concoct, alchemized together, then we take our equipment and we hot dip the exterior surfaces in that natural sealant so that it permeates into the wood. We only seal the exterior surfaces because we want the interior surfaces to be unfinished wood, which uh, encourages the bees in the deposition of propolis on the wood, which finally seals it up as well as making all the surfaces antimicrobial. As you can see here, all of our woodenware is made with a standard 7 8 inch thickness, which is uh, thicker than the typical 3 quarter inch that you will find in commercially produced equipment. That 7 8 inch thickness means that our interior dimensions are the same as you would find in another uh, manufacturer's standard uh, Western shallow boxes. So interior dimensions are the same, AKA compatible with other people's equipment, but thicker walls all the way around means a quarter inch wider and longer on, and, and an eighth inch uh, uh, sticking out, protruding on all sides if you were to say, want to use this with some other equipment that you acquired elsewhere. Um, so uh, 7 8 inch thick, all of our equipment is made with redwood or incense cedar and that closed cell growth form of the cypress family means dry, tight seams that don't absorb water as well. They don't absorb the, the moisture of the respiratory gases of the bees, so the equipment stays dry on the inside, stays dry on the outside, and no warping. Uh, we manufacture all of our equipment with four stainless steel screws uh, put through the, the uh, hand rests here, and uh, that gives them a ton of strength. These boxes can take a tumble and they stay square due to the fact that they have a three inch screw in all four corners. Um, all of our equipment, all of our boxes come standard with a dado cut uh, right down the middle of the short side of the boxes. That allows the insertion of a division board right here. And once you insert a division board, when you're paired with a two-way bottom board like here, as you can see our bottom boards have this additional cleat down the middle, giving you two smaller entrances, one to each side, which has some amazing features I'll talk about in a minute. But uh, a, that two-way bottom board when paired with a division board gives you the opportunity to take each box and create two separate four-frame cavities. This this configuration is how we raise all of our new starter colonies and how we raise our queens. So by being able to divide each box into two separate four frame cavities, that gives you the opportunity to have two starter colonies inside of each box, thereby doubling the number of new units that you can raise in an eight frame box. That's important because the process of raising new queens is is, is chancy and we tend to have about a 65 to 70 percent chance of success with something like that and so uh, it's very common that you would find that one side succeeded in raising a new queen and one side failed. If that's the case one then you simply remove your division board and reunite the colonies and thereby minimize any loss of resources or uh, of bees stores, what have you, and you very rapidly have uh, a full single full of bees on your hands with a laying queen. Um, as I was saying, our bottom boards, you'll note have weep holes in the corners. That's to make sure that uh, any uh, moisture that ends up into the hive doesn't pool up in, in the bottom board, but instead drips out through these holes. Um, as you can see here, and then opposite here. That way, there's one in each corner. That way if you uh, happen to have your 
your bottom board sitting on a slant and water were say running into the hive, it's not pooling up in the back and instead just drips out through the weep hole. We use an integrated bottom board that is also a one piece hive stand. So not necessary for a hive stand. This, this acts as both a hive stand and a bottom board. And when paired with our four way hive stands, they have an additional cleat that goes across the front of, of either side, thereby acting as a landing board. So, um, another cool feature of our equipment here I'll actually show you is that our lids and our bottom boards are interlocking and nesting. So what you can do is you can take your high stand bottom board and it neatly fits on top of and is locked onto the lid of, of the colony below. This enables you to take say small colonies or, or made, uh, starter colonies and place them on the lid of a full overwintered colony and capture the nest heat from below. So if you have a small colony that you're worried about it having um, adequate thermoregulatory capabilities to winter well, you can simply pick them up once they're done flying at the end of the season and drop them on top of another hive, thereby uh, essentially heating the small colony from below. That's not a feature you're gonna find in anyone else's equipment. Our lids are essentially a standard migratory lid with these additional cleats uh, for uh, minimizing warping as well as holding the bottom board on, like we said. And, um, and then, yes, yeah, so you got uh, all of our boxes are come standard with uh, these nice cleats for, for holding. We don't put a handhold on the end um, because the handhold cutout results in the big loss of heat from the colony. So no cutouts, just cleats, and the cleats have a nine, nine degree bevel, so easy for the fingers to hold. Even in gloves, you're not gonna slip out from under that beveled edge and makes it uh, easy to carry. The nice thing about our equipment being eight frame, Western equipment is that uh, this box here, completely full of honey, wooden wear and all, weighs 40 pounds. It's, the, it's a weight that anybody can uh, carry around all day long without hurting themselves. And uh, as, a, as a person who was starting to hurt his back lifting 80 to 100 pound boxes, I was very happy to make the conversion to, to this equipment and I'm sure you will feel the same. So that's a pretty good summary of the features of this equipment. It's built strong, utilitarian, takes a blow and uh, puts up with the intensive nature of commercial beekeeping, but also going to offer many years of life to, to the hobbyist. Uh, we're 10 years into building our equipment and all of the boxes that we built 10 years ago that haven't fallen off of a truck are still in operation. So it's anyone's guess how long the stuff will last, but my hunch is uh, you could get 20, 30 years out of this equipment if you don't drop it. <laughs>